Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage, and we're having our monthly tech meet for the Rolls-Royce Owners Club of Southern California. Uh, today we're going to be taking apart a GM Hydromatic 4-speed transmission that they used in the uh, R-Types and uh, Silver Cloud series. All right, I'll just put that there. This should come up right now. So that's the rear clutch assembly. You've got, oh, there's some more snap rings, that's right. little thin washer, we got a, another snap ring, okay, and then this center. This is the center support. So this bolts into here. I got one of those on the shelf. Oh, so now you know what it is. Oh, okay. It's got some bushings <laughs> inside that these shafts run on. It's got two sets of rings, which also hold fluid pressure to the drums. These rings, this, this thing, fits into there and what it, this this drum has little fluid pressure holes in it that are right oops, right between the rings so when I was putting air pressure in there it was feeding through here through one of these passages either forward or back and uh, between the rings and into these holes and applying the clutch there's, there's another snap ring down in here with another washer Another set of gears. Now you see this one has the rolling gears, the what are planetary gears. Planetary gears. This gear right here does isn't really a gear. What it does is it fits into these notches on the clutches. So when this is in here and it's in the clutches, the clutches are not applied, so it turns nice and easy. Once fluid pressure goes through all those passages and applies the clutch, it locks it up so this drum turns with this shaft. Now we'll take these apart so you can see the insides of those. All right, here's a, here's a tool I haven't used in a while. This is a transmission tool. It's a clutch pack compressor. All right, so what this thing does is it allows me to press this inner part because what's inside there are springs that hold all this tight. So it allows me to compress and then lock it because it has a ratcheting thing there. And then once it's locked, I should be able to get this thing out. That's a snap ring, all right? And then I press and pull the trigger and release it. Okay. Now, normally it would pop out a little bit further. So this has to come apart. Oops. I can take a hammer and bang this and screw it all up. But just take the plastic part. Even a soft mallet I would not use on this metal at all. There we go. All right, we're inside. Now, this is the part. It rolls on the center support. Remember with the rings? The fluid passages. And it has these holes in here. And when fluid is, is forced into those holes, this piston should come out. There it is. OK. And that's what we were hearing. That's what you heard, that thumping? Yeah. Is this thing applying? Yeah. Okay. OK. So the passage is in there. The passages are in there. You've got these rubber seals. And they're a lip seal. The original ones, I don't know how they ever put those things together. They had little metal expanders. The modern ones are nice rubber seals. All right. So this is a lip seal, kind of like a regular one, where this center section fits into the groove. And you got a lip at an angle, and it holds the pressure. 
So I've most of the time when you get an old burned up transmission, which I've seen a lot, there'll be splits in these. They just won't. They stop moving. Uh, they're hard as a rock. This is still flexible. It's not that old. And here are all your clutch packs. You've got. So what happens when you apply this? The way it locks it up is it takes this fiber, ferrodo or whatever it is. These are paper nowadays. Uh, and it just squeezes them all together. Now, what holds them in place is the pins. That locks, locks it to the outside part. And then the teeth on the inside lock it to this part. When you, I take apart a burned up transmission, these clutches, sometimes there's no more soft material on them. The steels are blue. They've been torched. Um, all must be replaced. Right. Um, now, how about parts for these, like the new seals and the new That's tracks? That's pretty, pretty easy to get. Easy to get. The, 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 the soft parts are pretty easy to get. The hard parts are hard sometimes. Pumps, you know, I've, I've had drums just explode before. These, brand new release springs, these have been replaced, you can tell. When they get cooked and they're old, they're discolored and they're shorter, sometimes a little tweaked. Uh, if these springs are weak, remember I was talking about the, the three four shift where things come on and come off and if the springs are weak, this one's not going to come off that quick. So if it's a delayed coming off and the band clamps on the outside, it's going to make it worse. It's going to burn it quicker. So unless the springs are really good looking, I always replace them. I was hoping to see some old springs in there. Where'd Bob go? Oh, yeah. oh, Robert. I was hoping to find some old springs or something else. Now, the seal, the seal that you took out, this, mm -hmm. the seal, seal right here, this is the one that's worn out? No. It's all right? Yeah. Reuse that one? I'm not going to reuse it. I'm going to put a new one in. But, uh, I'm taking this apart, like I said, because I want to revisit so it. So you'll replace this ring? This is rubber, yeah. What, what was, it, what was the There's another one in here. Faces the opposite direction for that passage. Two two seals. So which one was leaking? Neither one. the front seal was what was leaking. That that seal. We've already discovered or, or pinpointed the leak, the external leak. Yeah. I'm pulling this apart to look for reasons for poor shifting. Now. Was uh -huh. it pouring out of the front seal or just dripping? It was leaking a pretty good puddle. Yeah. If you it was running, it would it would, it would leak a puddle apart. about this big in probably Sorry. three minutes. Oh, really? And you turn it off, all the stuff that had been slinging around on the inside would run down and the puddle would get to that. Are you, are you going to open this and get this seal out? Not today. Oh, I see. This is kind of an overview of the, the Hydromatic. It's Hydromatic 101. I'm going to look at the seal surface, surface the worn rivets inside. I want to address, try to figure out why that, that should never come that close to that. So I don't know what's going on with that. Got to check, got to, well, either that or there's end float on the, on the crankshaft. If it's moving in and out. But it's still, it should, yeah, it could. If it's moving forward, it's going to pull it closer to that drum, which is in a fixed position, mm -hmm. that, that torus. Uh, as you saw, this one had four soft clutches. I think the rear one has eight. Why? Uh, it has to deal with more torque, I think. And that's tight. The clutches, yeah, they're the same. Even the seals are the same. And both of the houses are the same. And this has got its own little uh, inner clutch gear thing. That see all the clutches in there. Oh yeah. And that that goes on the shafts on on uh, this. It goes on one of these. 
believe it's this one, yeah. What a complicated deal, right? And this is old and simple compared to. Another one of those piston assemblies. Another lip seal, more clutches, steels. They all look pretty good. Uh, normally on a rebuild they will, but this one I won't because they're in good condition. Uh, but I will put the soft seals in. All the soft parts are General Motors. Hmm? All the soft parts are General Motors. I don't know where they're made anymore. They're interchangeable. With what do you mean? With Rolls Royce. Oh, 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 oh. Um, I don't think Rolls Royce supplies these parts. I doubt it. Rolls Royce is not supplying parts for many cars now. All right, so any more questions on the transmission? You guys all. I got a headache. Wow. Oh, no, I say I'm never going to do the transmission rebuild. Depends on who you are. We're done filming. Thank you.